PowerPoint uh, related to the issue of memo report and the chairman uh, has been the person who has investigated first for the idea of having the candidate involved in this type of program uh, and has had some recent conversations with the industrial party related to this. There's been some talk about the government perhaps limiting the inland ports to only those that have been designated as inland ports so far. Uh, this obviously is based on the full deal as I said. Uh, but it is a topic that the chairman wanted to bring forward and certainly with our uh, emphasis on logistics as uh, one of our key economic factors and how that relates to the development of the ports in uh, Georgia, Savannah, and uh, Brunswick, and the four lane and the lady port uh, makes this more of a final issue. So, okay. if I can kind of again explain it as much as I know at this point, of course, an inlet port, port or an intermodal port is where there's a location that's off the coast, off the port city, where these uh, cargo containers, uh, they're brought in by truck and or rail. When they come off the ships, they're brought to a location. They're then emptied, broken down, put in other transportation vehicles, whether it even be rail or whether it even be trucking to be distributed to the places, the designated locations for them to go to. Currently, Port Eel is the only designated inland port in the state of Georgia. What got me started on this was I had read an article that said that, but on the Port, on the port Eel model, that the state of Georgia was looking at designating five additional inland ports. And at that point, Valdosta was on the line, the <laughs> southern line, of course, with us being in the southern part of the state, of the same region that the Cordell Port would serve. Then there was one over the Brunswick area, one up around Atlanta, they, you know, and they extended out into the Carolinas and into Tennessee and over to Alabama. Well, I just felt like that it, it warranted, uh, again, a uh, study to see, well, if Valdosta, if you look at it from, from our point of view, we've got I 75. Uh, we are the closest city uh, to I 10, which is a major, let's just call it western, because really that's the point of where stuff would go to from there, uh, western uh, part. We also have others. We've got Highway 84, we've got Highway 133, we've got uh, uh, Highway 84 east and west. Now, 84, 82 was going to be really critical because, as I said, some of these things are coming in on trucks and some of them are coming on rail. We had rail. We got CSX and we've got Norfolk Southern, both of them here in our community. So, and both of those two rail systems serves the port. Um, so it, it, it just began to to me, begin to make sense to be to, to at least take a look at it, and I've used this terminology is to continue to look at it until somebody says, "Get your stuff together and go home and forget about this." I haven't had anybody tell me to forget about this; that it's not going to happen. When they tell me that, I'm going to ask them why should I forget about it, and then if they give me good enough reason that I'm going to drag up my top my toys and I'm coming home. But I think until then we need to continue to look at this because Dallas and Lowndes County, as we know, is a regional hub. We want to continue to grow as a regional hub, but we also want to take advantage of our our already that we have a certain amount of logistics designation. Um, you know, we've got several distribution centers already here. We have a. a we have a, a Lowe's distribution center, we have a, a Home Depot distribution center, we have a Dillard distribution center. Langdale 
uh, timber and all these sort of things that gets exported out of out of the Brunswick port and say for hundred years. I think I've read something where uh, uh, Lane Board had a major contract out of the plywood in China at some point. Well, they're not floating over there on little lake. It's going over there on containers. So again, there's a lot of moving pieces to this process that could lend to Ballast of Lowndes County becoming a designated inland port if that is expanded. Um, through just that short period of time, I also heard that well, they backed away from any other designations. And they backed away, I think, because of the concern with the expense of improving some of the rail systems in some of these smaller areas, uh, the short line rail, as you might say, because the containers can be quite heavy and it takes a lot of load on them, and the rail systems and some of these short lines just aren't designed for that. So they've had to make some changes there. Those trains loaded with those cargoes are going right through it, sir. Well, I'm probably <coughs> doing. Yeah, they probably do. So we've got all that land east of us. Yeah. East of town. Yeah. Flat land, nothing but pine trees out there, and those railroads are coming right through the middle. Okay, here, here's one thing to keep in mind. I'm just telling you what I know about the research that I've done. The railroad systems work off of a point of destination or a point of origination, is better for the site. Wherever it's loaded out of, whoever owns that rail, where it's put on there, they control that freight. So there's a lot of agreements out there with shippers that may use CSX. Well, CSX is going to then control how that freight moves. Same way with Norfolk Sub. So there's got to be some good communication between the rail systems. Um, I have talked with Andrea Schreier with Economic Development because I felt like certainly it was an economic development issue. She's been very cooperative. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, initially, I don't know that she was as enthused about looking at it, but I'm sure she probably already turned that rock over one time. Uh, but it's, but to me, it, you know, she, she's moving forward with it. But she is, uh, she is, she is setting up meetings with CSX, Norfolk Southern representatives uh, to ask the question there is that with the infrastructure that the rail systems currently have, is there a potential for Valdosta and Lowndes County to come in and import? Uh, also, she's getting a meeting set up with the Georgia Port Authority, which controls a lot of that as well, in Savannah. It's going to that meeting is going to be held Friday morning that we're going over to Atlanta for the ACCG conference. So everybody's going to be able to go. They're going to do a little Port Authority tour and then hopefully we'll be able to take some time to be able to talk to those folks at that time about the feasibility of it. So, when did you say that? I believe that's the 17th. That's that particular Friday. Um, and there again, that day is blessed. So we're just we're working on that now. But but this is something that I just want to run it through run it through the course just as far as we can because there's there's a high probability that if the House Bill 170 gets everything that it needs to get done and it becomes a bill and by 2016 when the revenue starts coming in and GDOT starts thinking about projects, they've already pushed back. I think I can say this 84 widening, which we thought they were fixing to start, they've now pushed that back. Uh, there's going to be some funding, there's going to be some planning, and there's going to be some stuff that's going to be planned with some of this potential revenue that's going to be coming in. And we want to be on the front end of this, not on the back end, trying to catch up to it to try to see what we can do. Uh, that's in the course. As far as I know it is where I'm at. Now there are there are a couple of obstacles that you've got to deal with. And if they're shipping containers out of the port that are full and they send them to Valdosta to have them unloaded and redistributed, they don't want empty containers back. They won't pull containers going back. 
So you have to also look at from a marketable standpoint, can you also be a central location that freight can come in from other areas so that it can be sent out. Well, those are timber products. Uh, Brunswick, the Brunswick uh, port, they ship out timber products, they ship out produce, vegetables, and all those sort of things goes out of that port. But I mean, we have the, the capacity and we have simply Moultrie and all that market area over there. South Lounge down here with their market and everything in the produce market. Now, they may be selling all that product here, but if they've got an outlet for another market, they can turn up more produce and it, it could be a viable solution. If you've got it, you'd be able to also hopefully have a resource for some larger manufacturing. If you've got a way for them to move their product to port and do it quickly, then they're going to be, that's going to be, to me, a plus for your community when they're looking at locating the manufacturing process. So uh, those are, it's a lot of working pieces, but it is a piece that's in, that's in, um, it's in the work. Any comments, questions? Makes sense? Okay. Well, 